everyone, and this is Buddy Bison, and welcome to the next series that I plan to play, which is Valkyria Chronicles. Now, I've never played any Valkyria Chronicle games, not one, not two, uh, not even the recently released Valkyria Revolutions, which I understand it does play quite differently from this one. But uh, I bought this game a while ago in a Steam sale, so I'm playing on the uh, PC. But I'm using a uh, uh, Xbox 360 controller to uh, play, just so the clicking of the keyboard doesn't uh, pick up super hard, because like it's really prominent when I click. So I said I would use my gamepad instead, and this is essentially going to be a blind LP. So uh, I don't really know what to do. Uh, so. <laughs> On the off chance that someone does watch this, if you have advice or something, I'd be more than willing to hear it or read it, I guess. Can't really hear a comment, huh? Uh, so let's, uh, let's get started. So, episode one. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Books. The year was 1935 E.C. Two powers controlled the continent. In the east, the sun rose over the autocratic East European Imperial Alliance, otherwise known as the Empire. In the west, a network of loosely allied democracies formed the Atlantic Federation. Both powers depended on a precious mineral ragnite for their survival, and its growing scarcity led to the inevitable war. Hostilities began in the East, when the Empire aggressively crossed their western border. The Atlantic Federation responded, and the Second European War was on. The Empire, with its vast military superiority, struck hard, gaining ground in early victories and putting the Federation on the defensive. Emboldened by their progress and momentum, the Empire set their sights beyond the borders of the Federation. In neighboring Gallia, a peaceful principality along the sea, they found their next victim. Gallia had long maintained its neutrality in the tensions between the two superpowers. But the rich stores of Ragnite under the Gallian soil proved too tempting for the Empire. It amassed troops along the eastern border, and invaded with all the force of an avalanche. Prologue, Gallia to Arms. Okay, so this is pretty uh, interesting. So it lets you review things, and I'm guessing the numbered ones are uh, missions. So, from what I can understand, this is basically just like, hey, look at World War One slash two, but between just two massive superpowers in a neutral state instead of the crap crap we went through. Okay. So, title screen, chapter select. Okay. Choose a tab within book mode and view its contents. Save. Uh, okay. So this is a. Okay, you can definitely tell that in this they're just kind of trying to replicate the. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. They're just doing their best to replicate the, uh... uh sort of the... Uh... PlayStation save menu type thing. Whereas... Ooh, no, don't want to do that. Uh, discard changes. Yeah, sure. Didn't really change anything. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, let's view this episode. Not sure how long this game will take, but I do you like this storybook. Nineteen thirty-five. Outside the Gallian border town of Brule. Residents are leaving the town before the invasion, headed inland towards the capital. road in years. The 
really hasn't changed very much. Whoa. Already? Hey there, guys. You're beautiful. Starting early this year. You're heading upstream, huh? How's the water? Put your hands in the air, slowly. Haven't seen you around before. What's your name? Um, uh, my name's Welkin, and you are... The one with the gun. We're with the Brilltown Watch. I'm Alicia. Alicia Melchior. So, I'm wondering what you've been writing in that little book you've got there. Imperial spies are in the area. <laughs> this book is nothing, really. Uh, I was just sketching the fish and, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> yes, oh, I know. And you know there's a war on, don't you? All right then, Mr. Artist. We'll talk about fish sketching down at the station. Take him away. Okay, so these don't necessarily mean that there's going to be, uh, like, a battle or anything. And I'm calling some bullshit right there. Like, he was just sketching the fish. He could have just been like, here, look at the book. <laughs> it's, I just was drawing a fish. No need to be a bitch about it. <laughs> So you see, I really was just sketching. Maybe. Or, this could be some kind of secret code. And I intend to take my time finding out for sure. <sighs> Great. Welks? Is that you? Isara! Oh, your timing is perfect. What have you gotten yourself into now, Welkin? Wait. Don't you live at the old general's house? That's right. I'm General Gunther's daughter, Isara. You do know everyone's supposed to evacuate, right? Yes, I'm aware of that. My brother's here to help me move to the capital, but that may be difficult. I mean, unless you're willing to let him go, that is. Huh? Oh. <clears throat> I apologize, but I was just doing my job, you know. I saw you with the notebook and thought you were a spy. Again, I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. Don't worry about it. I can see how I might have looked a little suspicious. Wilkes has a real passion for observing nature. That's why he's studying it at the university, right? Guilty as charged. I get so into it sometimes I forget where I am or that somebody might be watching me. <laughs> Gunfire! Everyone keep your heads down! Over there! Through training, anyway. Well, they're probably just a small scouting team. We should be able to take them out. I'm with you. Okay, cool. About saving the game. You know, you should probably save so you don't have to do all that, uh, all those cutscenes again. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just keep doing a new one every time. Okay. So when it doesn't seem to have a picture of, like, people, and it's just, like, that outline or whatnot, that seems to be, like, the battlefield shape. 
I'm calling some like these these empire guys are assholes. Like those like they they were just evacuating. These people are essentially invading to get a mineral or whatnot. Which okay. I understand it's supposed to be uh Okay. I understand it's supposed to be like, oh, it's this world's like gasoline or oil, because you know, when our gas runs out probably will be war. Um but god, if you have to run and like if you are de so dependent on one mineral, you can't do anything else. You should really not think about going to war to get more. You should be trying to be thinking of alternative power sources. But that, that's beside the point. Game doesn't have to make sense. And fuck those guys for just attacking this group, like evacuating civilians. <laughs> like, like fuck them. We've got to eliminate the Imperial Scouts that are approaching Brule. We'll deploy from here and take out all three of them. Okay, so we're starting at the bottom. Gotta go across the bridge. Just cross the bridge and take them down as fast as you can. Our objective here is to eliminate all enemies. Let's take care of them one at a time. Nice and easy. So, okay, so it has a... Uh, uh, a system that is similar to like a Fire Emblem game or a... Uh, or an Advance Wars game where a certain amount of turns pass, or c c certain characters die, and you'll fail. Unlike this guy where it's eliminate everybody on the board always, doesn't matter who you Let's use and who dies. Just stay calm and get it done. Yep. Let's do it. Okay, player phase, even as that. I see three of them. Okay, cool. That's three too many. Stay sharp. Listen a second. There's something I should explain. About CP, command points. When combat starts, you see a map of the area in your unit's position. It's referred to as command mode. Here, you'll select the unit you'd like to move based on the position respective to the enemy, then press A. Doing so, use one of the command points displayed at the top of the screen. They reflect your ability as a commander and represent the number of times you can give instructions to, i.e., control your units per each player phase. In this battle you have three CP, so you can issue instructions to your units up to three times. Let's try moving a unit now. Okay, that's Welkin, that's Alicia, and that's Town Watchman. Uh, okay, and that's a scout, another scout, and another scout. Okay. And I'm guessing those lines are who they can see, or who they can, or who their targets are. So let's go with Welkin. And this is what interested me about this game, because uh, it's like sort of an FPS, but it's also uh, like a third person uh, strategy game. I'm interested in it. I've never played it, but it looked intriguing. You CB to select a unit in command mode, and you'll be plunged into action mode. Here you can freely move the unit you selected around the field. As you move around in action mode, the action points AP gauge at the bottom of the screen will gradually deplete. This represents that unit's mobility. Once it reaches zero, the unit will be unable to move any further. Keeping an eye on the unit's remaining AP while they are in motion is critical to keeping them safe. Okay, so I'm guessing it give you, gives me just enough to get to that, uh... Okay, so use the left stick in any direction to move the unit near the sandbags. So one thing I am interested in is... Do I lose it if I go forward and then back? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. Okay, so I just hit target mode. About attacking, press the RB button to enter target mode. There, the unit will prepare to attack with their currently selected weapon. Use L to move the crosshairs onto an enemy, or the LB RB buttons to snap between targets. Enemies will not attack while you're in target mode, so take your time and aim well before pressing A to fire. Your shots will land somewhere within the circle surrounding the crosshairs. Okay, so it's better to center it on the entire target. Shots to the head or other weak points result in greater damage. The unit can only attack from target mode up to once per action, so choose wisely before you open fire. If the target survives your attack, they may then launch a counterattack. Damaged unit may not have the HP hit points to survive the enemy's counter, so be careful when playing your attack. Okay, can I exit? Okay, good. I can exit target mode after initiation. Okay, so then I can aid a crouch. And I can still target mode. So, 
This game is interesting because it's like, oh, you should probably go for body shots unless you have a super accurate weapon and you're confident that your bullet will, like, nail them in the head. So, I'm going... Oh, man, this is probably the easier with the mouse, right? Oh, yeah. So, I may just use my mouse for aiming and everything else. Uh... Oh, wow. About ending actions. A unit with zero remaining AP that has already performed an attack in target mode is unable to attack for uh, unable to act further. Press B to end their current action. This will turn you command mode where you'll be able to select the next unit you wish to direct. You can press B and end a unit's action even if they have not attacked and still have AP. Okay, so, so. So, what I understand about this is basically I can't use him again to attack. Uh, because he's already attacked. But if he hadn't attacked, I imagine I could then uh, move again. Which is pretty cool. My turn, okay? Okay. Okay, so that seemed to be a, a critical hit or just like a killing hit. About using cover. Okay, so the sandbags, of course. When standing near sandbags, the command crouch will appear. Press A to take cover behind them. While hiding behind cover, you can a harder target, take less damage, and are they are immune to headshots and critical damage. Which makes sense, because only the head is popping out, so if you're taking less damage, but you can still get crit, what's the point of having it? Meanwhile, units caught out in the open by enemy attacks will be easier to hit and could take significantly more damage. Advance carefully, moving from cover to cover, always trying to end your action, staying hidden behind cover. Doing so should keep your troops alive long enough to secure victory for Galia. Okay, rock. Okay, can't... Uh, I wish I could crouch here. So it does seem like I can attack and move again, even though that, from my understood, the game said I couldn't. Okay, no. Okay, gonna end the current action. About ending the phase. When your CP reaches here, the player phase ends and the enemy phase begins. One player, enemy phase pair constitutes a single turn. The fewer turns you complete a mission in, the more cash and experience you receive at the end, but being too hasty can lead to unnecessary risks. The key is to find a challenging balance. So the, re so the reason why I moved her is because I wanted her to at least get behind cover and not be out in the open, even though I could have moved a soldier in again. Okay, so that was useful. So from what I understand, uh, character units don't necessarily have XP, it's the uh, using CP effectively. When used well, even a limited pool of CP can take out a significant number of foes. CP can, used, CP can be used on the same unit multiple times, as I showed in the last turn before being told. For instance, a pool of 3 CP can be used uh, to move one unit three times in a row. Perfect for cutting into enemy lines or hiring past dangerous terrain. That said, people get tired. They'll start each consecutive action with fewer AP than the last. Okay. You cancel the button to end your phase with CP still remaining. Those CP will be carried over to the next turn. Okay. CP are a fresh resource. So how you choose your... F uh, how to choose manage them will decide your fate. Okay. So you could just stock up a shit ton of CP, like, 
right at the end. And... And then wait, wait, wait until you could, like, do a super hard bum rush. I should be able to get over here. Um... Okay. Now this is counter. So I'm gonna end that current action. I'm just gonna do it with him again. Because I don't see like a level on my characters, but from what I understand, like each one is given a uh each one is given a uh Here we go. A how, how do you call it? Like a like that one was a scout. So I believe that there are multiple classes in doing things with a certain class gains the class XP. So all the units in that class get better. Oh, this is cool. It's like a, it's like a super cool, a very official document. So total XP two hundred and total DCT. I'm guessing that's money. Took me two turns, and I got a B rank, most likely due to the damage I took. I don't see how you could end it in one turn. Unless you <laughs> unless you were super gutsy about it, and you just ran up to them and, like, just like, Hey, look, I'm right in your face. I'm just going to shoot your head only. New episode has been added. Okay. Hilltop promise. So, more... More story. Miss Melkia. There's no other sign of the enemy. Good. Now, go keep watch and stay alert. Yes, ma'am. Uh... What should we do with the bodies, ma'am? We'll bury them. So it's begun. I'll do whatever it takes to protect the people of this town. I'll do it. Even going to war, I'll do it. Seeds from the lion's paw. It blooms white, small, simple, and strong. I want to be able to remember, once the war is over, that it wasn't all just people killing people. That even in war, there was also new life. On the 15th day of the third month, of the year 1935, the Empire began its assault in earnest. A formal declaration of war was made upon Gallia. Though it was only a small front in a massive continental assault, what followed would prove that a tiny nation could best a military giant. These events would tell a story of tragedy hidden in the mists of time. A story of courage, and of trust, of persecution, and hate. And of love blooming even through the flames of war. What follows is a record of this conflict, and of those who fought, lived, and died. So that was, uh... Chapter 1. In Defense of Brule. Okay. So, they chose, like, the time period between World War One and World War Two, so that it wouldn't be held down 
which I kind of like. Just making sure I saved. Uh, well, not making sure I saved, making sure I saved correctly. Uh, which I kind of like. Uh, and one thing that I was thinking about during the fight was uh, the voice of Isana, uh, the girl that Welkin uh, was meeting, uh, not the one with the gun. Uh, I believe her, her, she sounded a lot like uh, Maka Albarn from uh, Soul Leader. I'm not sure if they had the same voice actress, but I, but I will try and check that. So, ugh, I'm I'm hoping that this goes all good. But that that was actually pretty fun. Uh, I'm not the best at aiming with a control stick, uh, so from time to time you may hear clicking from me using my mouse to aim instead. Just figured I would tell you that. spinning again really makes it feel like home sweet home hmm. <laughs> I hear that it really is one of the most beautiful things about this town well citizens our enemy can't be far behind I thank you for your help. Goodbye, and take care. <laughs> How's the packing coming along, East? Almost done. I only need to take the everyday basics. Well, the Empire... Yep, shit. Martha, look! Wilkes is here! Oh! <laughs> Welcome back, Welkies! <laughs> You're still calling me that? Martha, I'm 22 years old. And more important, you shouldn't be running around. Aren't you due any day now? Ah, oh, a light job won't hurt the little spud. <laughs> I should know. I've already had four of them. Hello there. Um, it... Is Welkin in? Oh, hello, Alicia. What brings you here? I just wanted to apologize. For before. Um, here. This is for you. Really? These are for me? I work at the bakery. Well, I did until the war started anyway. It's where I live, too. That's preserved bread, so it's pretty hard. Heat it up before you eat it, all right? I baked it myself, so the flavor's guaranteed. Best you ever had. Thanks. Uh, do you want to come in? Arrested and shot at? <laughs> You've had a busy day of it, haven't you, Welkies? And what a lovely lady you are for all that adventuring. Good job, Welkies. What? Wait, no, it's not like that. Alicia just saved my skin, that's all. He's right, we just met. I'm not his girlfriend, just his hero. Although I'm really hoping to be his friend. Oh, well I'm sure you will. Be good to my Welkies here, won't you? Okay, seriously, Martha, enough with the Welkies already. That's a lovely portrait. Is that General Gunther? Yep. It was taken before I was born. But that's Dad. That's Dad? You're a lucky guy. And who's that with him? My father, Tamer. He was an engineer. The General's tank was his creation. Wait a minute. But I thought the General was your dad. My birth parents died when I was a baby. The General was kind enough to take me in as his own after that. Yeah. We're not related by blood, but she's definitely my little sister. 
Sorry, was that question too personal? No, I don't mind at all. I was blessed with two wonderful fathers. Yeah, I guess you were, huh? Oh, is that really the time? I've got to get going. Why don't you see her off, Welks? I can take care of the rest of this on my own. All right, I will. I'll be right back. See you later, Isara. Safe travels. Sorry about skipping that tiny part. I do like how you can go back to like individual portions of it, though. Uh, I need to figure out if there's a way to hit auto-scroll, but I don't want to experiment around with the buttons in case I'll skip it. So I'm going to try and get it to like auto-scroll or something right now. No, no. No, I just skipped it. Just straight out skipped it. I'm going to skip this one, too. <laughs> Skipping that. Okay. So I don't think there's any way to get it uh, to blatantly... <laughs> um, uh, I, I have to click and skip. I'm going to try and click, see if that picks up less. Look at this. Or just watch. A ghost town. They've been leaving for a while. Just about everyone is evacuated by now. I can't blame them. Tensions are rising with the Empire. We'll survive. The Town Watch will guard and protect the homefront. Everyone will come back someday. They'll come back when it's safe again, right? Mm -hmm. So, Welkin, I'm curious. Are you gonna join the army like your father? Hmm. I don't think that's for me. What I'd really like to do is be a teacher. Teacher? Yeah. Animals and insects, flowers and plants, they've always been my passion. I've learned a lot from nature. See, my dad, he protected this country as a general, but it's just that I, I want to give back in my own way. My own way, you know what I mean? I think I do. You're sure about it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Deep in your own way. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm? Ah! <sighs> what was that? That sound. Okay. What was that? I don't know, pigeon shitting? Just massive assholes. They're attacking civilians, for Christ's sake. Have some, like, honor, you piece of shite. I'll be happy to murder all of them. I don't believe it. The mill. Okay. Now, Y, no. X, no. Okay, any of those? No. No, no. Okay, well, it looks like I gotta click. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Miss Melchior, the Imperials are attacking. There's a squad of them in town right now. Get all the town watch together now. We've got to fend them off. They must be at Mill Plaza. I'll help. Thanks, Welkin. Now move out. Stay low. <laughs> I don't want to be a soldier, but I'm on the front of this. I'm on the cover of this game in soldier garb. I wonder what happens. Explain the mission. And they sort of revealed that we win by the end as well. Because they're like, oh yeah, shows how a small country can overthrow a giant empire. It's like, well, thanks for taking all the, like, wonder out of it. Like, oh, maybe we'll lose. But, no, nah, this is essentially, you can tell, like, a past. Because it, it's told in, like, storybook form. Which I like. Pretty cool. Okay, 
Im enemies invade the windmill plaza and has taken almost the entire area over. We will deploy from this position, so at the bottom. Hide behind sandbags for cover as you advance towards the plaza. Our goal this time is to eliminate the en enemy leader. I'm pretty sure they'll be there in the plaza area. Be careful, there may be enemy units hiding behind the buildings out there. And enemies won't show up in the command mode view, so be careful as you make your advance. Okay. So enemy leader is defeated. Okay, okay, let's begin. It's up to us to defend rule. Okay. So gotta be careful of hidden enemies. Which makes you uh our target is the Imperials in Mill Plaza. Focus on taking down their captain. Breaking the chain of command should at least buy some time for the townspeople to get away. Alright, I got it. Let's all be careful out there. Got a second? Listen close and I'll explain. About damage. Same amount of damage a unit has sustained is healed in each turn. Okay, that's nice. If a unit has taken heavy damage, don't push them. Stay back and heal up. Should enemies attack drive a unit's HP to zero, their condition becomes critical. In this battle, you have no way of helping a unit in critical condition. Try to fight carefully so no one's HP reaches zero. Okay, that's useful. So this U is use useful because... They said, oh, they might be hiding behind buildings. So, that's a scout. That's also a scout. And we don't see anyone else, so that means we don't know where the captain is. But he's probably, like, here or here. Like, around here. So, I need to be careful of, like, this building, these buildings, over here, this one. Guarantee there's probably an enemy here or here. But, uh... I wish I could see it from the, uh... Oh, I didn't save. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, this. I'm just gonna... About sight lines. When a unit sights... When a unit sights an enemy in action mode, a sight line will appear over his or her head. Okay, as I was thinking, that's sight. That line connects the unit to the enemy, meaning that line points in the direction of the enemy location. Use as a guide when attacking or when trying to position units in a... Oh, God, I am... I could talk fine during Disgaea. Enemy sighted. Oh god, I did not mean that. I did not mean to do that. Um... I wish there was a way to peek. Okay, well there's no one over there. Gonna run back over. About attacking enemies. Pressing the LB or RB buttons will, in target mode, automatically lock on to the next enemy within firing range. The crosshairs will turn red when a unit when a unit aiming at an enemy has a clear line of sight on their target. Use the guide line to, that extends from the gun when firing near obstacles to see if they are blocking the shot. Okay. If that line is interrupted, it means the unit's attack will be blocked. When the crosshairs are on an enemy, the attacking unit's weapon specifications appear at the top of the screen. Uh, this purse shows damage against human targets. This armor, okay. So O X X. So usually in Japanese games or whatnot, O is good, X is bad, uh, and you can triangle is usually neutral, and you can get like really good with like a double O. I'm I think that this is about the same. Symbol will indicate the effectiveness against targets. O will indicate effective. Triangle indicates can only give slight damage, so neutral. X means ineffective, so less than normal. Area shows where the attack will damage broad area shots, which is the number of rounds fired per each attack. Okay. To kill is the number of shots that need to connect in order to defeat the target. In this case, of the five rounds fired, two must hit to defeat the enemy unit. This number only takes shots that hit the center of the crosshairs into account. Misses or hits to other areas of the target are not taken into account in this number, so w like winging a person doesn't count to the two kill. This provides an estimate you can use when targeting, when selecting a target, and can be used to line up headshots and critical attacks. Okay, so this is, yeah, it's like too far away. Uh, but this should be fine. So I'm gonna hope for a crit. Yeah, good. Got it. Yes. That's good. So what I'm going to do is I am going to 
push up already. And now I'm gonna end current action here. And then I'm going to move town militiamen. Try and get. Uh, to kill? What? Why does it take so many shots? This one takes. And I also hope for a couple crits. Good. So if you aim really good, you should be fine. End current action there. Sir. So you're just a really powerful person. Oh, it's because he's also behind cover. Oh god, that was terrible. Shit, 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 shit's going wrong. Shit's going really bad. Gonna end unit here. Yeah, end current fate. God, that was <laughs> running around. Oh god. I wish there was a, because basically what you do to, uh, to, like, jump over things is you just hold forward on them. Okay, so that, okay, so corners do nothing. They do absolutely nothing for you. Ah, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Ah, oh, so close to dying. Okay. So I like it has the question mark because they're not in line of sight here, but this is like the last known location of them. So how are you? You're not doing too hot. So what I want to do is I want to stand, target mode, get them. Okay, and then I want to come over here, and I can't target mode again, but, oh, okay, I'm gonna end that action, because I want to move them all up at around the same pace. Uh, Welkin. That guy's almost dead. It, it was weird, because it wasn't giving me, like, the information it would take. So... Oops. Okay, I'm gonna end that action there. Because I successfully pushed up quite far. So now I'm going to... gonna go for the dude behind cover, but because he takes decreased damage, I decided against it. Might as well try and kill the guy that uh, I isn't crouched or anything. Because this game seems pretty good on, like, hits and misses. Okay. See, I wonder if uh, the... Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's why I wanted to have multiple people there. Oh, that was the captain. Didn't even realize. Thought there was, like, more people. But I believe I got the maximum amount of kills. What 
What's that? Sounds like a tank. Okay. So, they're just throwing me into another part of the battle. <laughs> that is perfect. Oh, so, so long as the thing is moving, people are firing at it. Okay. And I'm guessing the key to, uh, killing the tank is hitting the thing at the back. The giant glowing thing. Take out a tank. I hate to say it, but we should probably pull out for now. Get off this road and into the alley to the east. It's too narrow for a tank to follow. And try to stay behind cover while moving. One blast from that turret, and it's over. So, uh, okay, Welkin has to reach the destination, but a li not, neither of them can die. And the goal is here. So, what it wants me to do. Is it did say east, but I'm guessing they don't mean here. I'm guessing they want me to go down here, and cut across here. Unless they do want me to like go out behind and around. I don't know. Let's. Oh no 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 no. no. So welcome. We oh, God damn it, Alicia. I want it. Oh my god, really? I hit A instead of B because I was thinking of... Son of a bitch. Oh my god, this is so dumb. Don't know where to go. Oh my god. I'm just gonna get a fucking that that was absolutely terrible. It took so much unneeded damage. Town watch. This is probably what they want me to do with Welkin, but I'm an idiot. Because <sighs> these make it look like they're houses, but they aren't. <laughs> these are houses. Turn, okay. So because... I'm gonna put Alicia out, that way she can... Can I... Ooh, I'm not sure... what the accuracy of the hat is. Oh, good. So she seems to be really accurate with her gun. Like, extremely accurate. Okay. 
And I put her there, that way enemies that are moving would, uh, would get counterattacked easier. Like, I really want to try and hit that blue thing on the tank. Shit. Just destroyed a tree. So... Can it just run over my people? Okay. So now it's player's turn. And I got I gotta move Welkin. Okay, so right now Welkin is here. You know what? I'm going fucking gutsy with it. Just gonna shoot that guy in the head. Going to crouch in the current state of action. I'm gonna get Alicia. I'll just have her attack from here. Kill him. And now I want to see if I can do damage to that thing. But, I should probably try and just get Welkin uh, across. Like, I really want to be experimental, but that now really isn't the time to be experimental. Oh, come on. Okay. Because I wanted to try and shoot that blue thing, but I didn't want to risk losing the mission. Phew. Looks like we shook him. What are you doing from here? If they're rolling in the tanks, there's not much the town watch can do. We'll try to buy time so everyone can get away. I'll dig in my heels at the main gate and do what I can to stall them. Okay, I'll head back to my house and grab Isara and Martha, then come back. Be careful out there, Welkin. Yeah, I took a lot of damage that time. <laughs> But doing pretty decent. No, and I, oh, honestly, I killed, I killed more people than probably necessary, and it felt great. Chapter two, escape from Brule. Okay, new episode has been added. So, with that, I'm going to end episode one here because we're going at almost an hour at this point. So, I hope you all enjoyed episode one of the Valkyria Chronicles Blind LP. I, I'm really liking this game. Like, it, it seems very fun, and it doesn't seem, like, overpowered in any sense. Because if I am correct in thinking that that giant blue thing on, on the back is its weakness, or at least its power source so it can't move after, and anything can affect it, which I didn't want to try out because I accidentally fired with Welkin and I didn't want to risk that happening again. It does seem to be like pretty evenly balanced in terms of characters versus uh, enemies. So with that, I'm going to end episode one here. So Buddy Bison signing out, and I hope you all have a very nice day.